Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the week. I am so excited to share with you today's podcast because it is about a decor project that I've been working on for a while, but also an idea that I've been mulling around in my head for over a year wanting to do and just not have either having the time, the resources, or having found the right products to work with. But finally, it is done. Today, I will show you how to style your very own bar cart to your taste, to your preferences, to your lifestyle. And I will also explain why you might want to consider it if you're kind of on the fence, because they really do offer up all sorts of options when it comes to entertaining, whether you prefer morning, afternoon, evening, whatever your taste, whatever your lifestyle, as we said before, a bar cart really is a good idea. So where does this idea or this need for a bar cart come to mind when it comes to living a simply luxurious life? Well, I'm going to start with my mindset when it comes to, when it comes to a bar cart, for whatever reason, having watched all six seasons of Sex and the City, as well as the two films, I always loved not only watching all the fashion, of course, and following the storylines, but I also loved seeing what the decor um, was going to be for each scene especially when they went to the movies. The movies brought in a whole other plethora of options for decor that they didn't actually have on the actual show, although you did have them from time to time with the revamp of the apartments. Anyway, I'm kind of going off course there, but let me get back on. One piece of decor I thought would always be perfect for Carrie Bradshaw was a bar cart. She lived in a small apartment. She was on her own and she loved to entertain. But did she really love to entertain? Not really, she was always out and about. So I guess it probably doesn't fit into her lifestyle. But the funny thing is, and why I bring that up, is because if you've watched the video or the short little clip by Vogue that they do on their ongoing series, 73 Questions, Sarah Jessica Parker was one of the first people they interviewed and they took a tour through her brownstone at the time. And as you're following her around her home, you notice in one of the pics that there is a bar cart, a freestanding bar cart. And I was like, oh, so maybe Carrie Bradshaw (laughs) doesn't like the bar cart, doesn't need one. But Sarah Jessica does. And that's all the more evidence to prove that anyone, anyone, no matter how big your income, no matter how big your space, a bar cart is a great idea. And that's the thing. They really are available for any space, whether you live in a studio, whether you live in a big house, whether you live, maybe you're traveling, maybe you have a trailer, I don't know, an Airstream, or maybe when you're at your hotel, you've, you've used one, you've enjoyed one, you can see that there is a need. So today we're going to dive into why you should have one. And I've kind of mentioned a few reasons right there. Also, I'm going to show you how to style it and offer images for my very own bar cart that is in my living room. So if you would like, feel free to go to the show notes today at www.thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 26 and you will see how I styled my bar cart as well as all the links and places to go shop for what you see there if you like or interested in anything. I will also, at the bottom of the, sh- the notes, the show notes, I went shopping for you and I found about five to seven different bar carts, different styles, different sizes, different uh, materials. And you can kind of look at those and different price points as well because it really is up to your taste. So let's get started. Why should someone have a bar cart? Well, number one, they're versatile. Whether you live, like I said, in a studio, whether you live in a spacious home, you can have a bar cart, no matter what the size of your rooms are. Maybe you have a huge room, but you have just one small corner that needs something. Add a bar cart. Add a bar cart. Based on the size that you need, there's all sorts of options. So that's the one thing that I love about a bar cart is that it's versatile. Number two is when you have a bar cart all set up in any particular room, you can keep the conversation flowing. 
If you live in a house that doesn't have an open floor plan and you're the hostess, drinks run out, appetizers are dwindling down, you need to restock, you've got to go to the kitchen. And maybe you were in the middle of a conversation, but you also notice that your that your drinks need to be refilled. You don't want that conversation to die. And so having that bar cart right there allows for that conversation to continue as you refill their wine glass or serve them another canapé, whatever it is. I love that. And the other thing about that is that you can allow them or invite your guests to serve themselves. So it's more of this comfortable, laid back, casual style, depending on how you entertain, but that option is there. So number two is it allows the conversation to continue to flow. Number three, if you're entertaining, you're having a dinner party. Oftentimes before you serve dinner, you have drinks. Rather than having the drinks at the dinner table, you can have your drinks in the living room or in the sitting room or the great room, whatever you call it, or the parlor, wherever you live, wherever you call it, and your bar cart is there all ready for drinks and it allows for immediate access and instant entertaining. So as soon as the guest walks in the door, you give them a drink, either sit down, stand up, whatever it is. It allows the conversation to begin. It allows people to start relaxing with that drink if if you're drinking alcohol. And it just kind of just slows the evening down, makes it chill. It's not all about let's come, let's eat, let's leave. It allows time to just be forgotten. Just allows time to be forgotten. And then the other side of the evening after dinner, why not move your guests into another room, mix up the conversation, switch up the seating arrangements, different people meet different people, and you can serve your, your, your dessert, you can serve your after dinner aperitif, whatever it is that you wanna serve for after dinner. You can do it with your bar cart in any room of the house besides the dining room. It leaves the dining room, the plates, to stay in the kitchen, stay in the dining room so you can leave and as a hostess, stay in the room with your guests and not worry about any kind of mess that may have been left behind. Because I think that's part of it. We feel that we have to present a nice home. And after dinner, the plates are messy. That You know, there's napkins being strewn everywhere because people are done eating as they should have. They should have enjoyed themselves. Move the conversation to another place that's already neat and tidy and set up for entertaining. And you can relax as a host because you know your guests are going to be comfortable. The fourth one kind of ties in with the third one because by allowing your guests to come to a different room rather than the dining room, You'll probably have sitting chairs, armchairs, sofas, ottomans that are tufted or or upholstered so they're soft, and your guests are going to be able to relax. And when they're able to relax, often time, like I said, is forgotten. Conversations begin and they just take their natural course. And often with the right company and the right energy, that time is lost and memorable evenings are created. So number four is to relax in comfort. The last one, as for a reason to consider adding a bar cart to your house, is number five, mobility. If you buy a bar cart with wheels, hello, you get to move it. You can move it wherever you need it to be. And typically around most of the months of the year, it's probably going to stay in the same spot. But for example, maybe you're having a big gathering and you need to shift your furniture around or move some furniture out and rearrange. Or maybe it's the holidays and you have a holiday tree and you've got to shift that around. Such was the case this last December when I had a holiday party. I had my tree, so I had to move out some furniture. I moved my bar cart to a different angle so that my bartender could stand behind it and have full vantage of the entire room to see if anybody needed a refill, anybody needed a drink because they just walked in the door, and then also easy access to the bar through all the people. So it really just depends on the event, but it's nice to be able to move it easily if it's on wheels. And that is number five, a benefit for having a bar car, mobility. All right, so those are the five benefits. But before we get to how to style your bar cart, we're gonna take a quick one minute intermission and I'll see you on the other side.
welcome back. All right, so those are the benefits. Let's now talk about, hopefully now you've been, you're now more than on the fence. You've maybe stepped over to the other side of the fence that are considering. Now, and the good thing about bar carts really quickly is you don't have to spend more than say $100 on your first bar cart. You can even get a stand and put a tray on top of it. You can really make your own bar cart technically. You don't have to have wheels on it. That's the good news. If you, there are many out there that have wheels, don't get me wrong, but maybe you don't need it to be mobile. So it just depends on what you want to start with. But the good news is that a bar cart really doesn't have to be terribly expensive. It can be. There are some out there that are exorbitantly expensive, but they're also antiques and they're worth investing in because they're going to be valuable down the road. It's really up to you. So how do you set it up? Now that you're sincerely considering styling your bar cart, how do you set it up? Well, this is the beauty of bar carts. You may think of Mad Men or you may think of a typical bar car where, or bar for that matter, and just hard alcohol, martini shakers, martini glasses, all the different types of hard alcohol that you could imagine. To be honest with you, that's not the way mine's set up. I don't drink hard alcohol anymore. And I mean, I made from time to time, but I don't really need it in my house per se, unless I'm having a big gathering. So I usually stock mine with wine, beer for those guests that I typically think will have beer. And then I also will use my bar cart for morning tea or afternoon tea or morning pastries. So there are all sorts of ways you can use a bar cart. Don't think that you have to have alcohol on it. You don't have to have alcohol on it. You can have a beautiful breakfast bar and have your croissants in a pastry pedestal, have a beautiful teacup, um, a saucer, and then your beautiful teapot. As I showed in my Instagram photo last week, The teapot that I found was simply at a consignment shop for 20 bucks, but you know what? It spoke to me and I was like, I'm adding this. So, and it remains as decor when it's not in use, which is even better. And that's really part of having a bar card is it actually adds a simple signature touch to your house that speaks a little bit about you, but also is functional when you want to entertain. So number one, first decide how you want to use your bar card. Are you going to use it just in the morning, afternoon, or only in the evening? This is going to determine what you shop for, because as you know, bar carts aren't that big and you probably can't have all the things for, from martini shakers all the way down to teacups and saucers. I tried that online. It got a little too cluttered. So I have to rearrange it depending on what I'm going to do. So since I typically drink wine and tea, that's what I've stocked mine with. And you'll see that in the pictures on the show notes today. Second one is you're going to want to have glassware. Regardless of what function your bar cart uses, you're going to have to have something to drink whatever liquids or drinks are on your bar cart. So you certainly could choose matching sets, absolutely, which is actually what I prefer. But it's also fun to go to various decor consignment shops or yard sales or estate sales and find really unique glasses, maybe all the same style but different colors or maybe all the same color, but then different style, like different stems or heights, whatever it is, have some fun with it. This may take time to come together and that's even better. That's even better. So to have some fun kind of slowly building your ideal bar cart. The third thing to make sure to consider when you're styling your bar cart is tools and supplies. If you're stocking a classic bar cart, capable of making mixed drinks, you will need to, for certain, to have a lot of supplies. And I have a list on today's show notes, backslash podcast 26, of the list for mixed drinks, which would include an ice bucket, a martini shaker, strainer, a jigger, toothpicks, ice tongs, possibly a stirrer. And then if you want to add, and this is actually for function and for decor, colorful straws or sterling silver straws. And then of course you're going to need some napkins. So have some fun with choosing your cocktail napkins. That's all you'll need for mixed drinks, but no doubt you're probably going to use it for something else. So if you have a wine bar or a beer bar on your bar cart, obviously you're going to have to have a beer, a wine opener and a bottle opener on my bar cart. I have a bottle opener, but it doesn't look like a bottle opener. It is, it is an owl and it's just, I just, I don't know. I have a predilection for owls. I don't know why, but I do. Anyway, and I found this, this bar, uh, this bottle opener at world market for like two bucks. And I was like, what is this? Cause of course I'm gravitating to the owl that I see sitting on the shelf and it's a bottle opener. I'm like, beautiful. So I pick it up and that's what sits on mine. So again, function and creativity or style. Another thing that makes sure you add for your wine is a decanter, 
And you can also have an ice bucket for the wine bar as well as the mixed drinks bar because you're going to want to put your white wines and your rosés in those to chill while they, after they've been opened. Now, if you are like me and you want to have a bar cart used in the morning or afternoon with tea and maybe pastries or sweets. Like I said before, find a teapot, but also look for a really simple or unique pastry display. Put it up on a pedestal so it adds a little bit of height to your bar cart because having a varying height is always a good idea. And it's simple. This is the easiest one to set up because you don't need a lot of stuff, but it also allows the food to shine. It allows the food to shine. So again, I'll have a list of all of those uh, details that you'll need for the tools and supplies on today's show notes if you need them. I just kind of skimmed over them really quickly. The fourth necessity for styling a bar cart are the beverages. Of course, you got to have something there to drink, right? It's a bar after all. But for appearance's sake, do consider the bottle and the style that it presents. And you may want to buy more than one if you want to have a really monochromatic look. It's really up to you. Whatever effect you're going for for that particular event. Now, granted, if it's just for day-to-day use, it's going to be totally different. But it is up to you to have some fun with it. I found a really unique rosé bottle, and the wine was actually recommended by the wine um, the wine shop owner. And he's like, oh, and the bottle looks great too. I'm like, perfect. And you'll see that in the pictures as well. So I'm eager to drink that but I really love the bottle. So I'm like, ah, when do I do that without losing the bottle? Because they only have one. But anyway, have some fun not only with what you put on your bar to drink, but also what it looks like. Consider that if you can. If you can't, no big deal, obviously. The fifth one is a fun one to have on your bar cart for conversational pieces, but also to light um, candles or even a fireplace if you have a fireplace in your living room or your library or wherever your bar cart may be. I wish I had a library. Wouldn't that be lovely? Um, Well, most people don't smoke anymore, as you would imagine. And if they do, they usually go outside. The, The matches are simply, like I said, for the candles, an easy access to it. But they also offer... Um, you an opportunity to go on a treasure hunt. I am now perpetually on a treasure hunt for matchbooks. Wherever I travel to or wherever I go, I'm always looking for these little boxes and they're usually like three to four bucks. So they're really inexpensive and they're a reminder of where I've traveled. They're also a great, you know, conversation starter. If you're over there with someone you've never met and maybe, you know, you're saying, Hey, have you ever heard of this place? And that have you, ever, or whatever it may, uh, who knows? I mean, it's just a great, obviously, obviously a great visual as well, um, to add something different to your bar cart. And it may not be something you want to add, just an idea. Mother nature is another thing. Number six, mother nature. Since you have all this metal and glass on your bar cart, you want to soften it up a little bit with some mother nature. Add a bouquet of flowers, one or two. They can be all different colors. They can be monochromatic. can be a simple little plant if you want. Whatever you want to put on there. I would definitely, though, suggest something from nature. Something from nature on your bar cart. On the second or third Um, shelf or the top shelf, depending on how it works for you. Number seven is to add conversation pieces. Again, the matchbooks could be this for you, or it could be the picture that you, that you frame and put up above your bar cart or set on the top shelf of your bar cart. Or for me, what I did is I bought this really simple uh, bowl. Um, and it was about two bucks at a consignment shop. It just caught my eye with the right colors that I wanted. And I always collect my corks from all the wine bottles. They're great fire starters, number one. But what I started to do on a lot of my corks is that after I've opened the bottle and depending on what the event is, I will write down on that cork the year or the date and the event who I was spending it with or whatever I want to put down there. And so it's kind of a great way to keep track of memories. And so as I go through my bowl that I have on my lower shelf, it's kind of fun to be reminded, oh, that's right. We did have a really good bottle of wine that night. Oh, I remember that night with that particular group of people. We had so much fun. We were celebrating this or we were, you know, commiserating this or whatever it may be. So it's really up to you. So um, that's that's my conversation piece that I have on my bar, bar cart. Number eight, and this is optional, obviously, based on space and interest and your sensitivities, but I like to have a candle or candles on my bar cart. I actually ended up finding, and you're going to again see this in the show notes with my pictures. Um, I was in Portland one weekend and I was actually there for something else. I was shopping, going to another store for something else. And I walked by and there's this pop-up estate sale right there on Northwest 23rd in Portland. And I'm like, what? What? And evidently it was a lady who she collects, she collects a lot of different, um, furniture, 
Um, and she sells it, but she was just overstocked and she was trying to whittle it down and she had a storage space and she just opens it up from time to time and lets the public go through. And the prices were astronomically low, absolutely slashed. So I found this candelabra, the single candelabra that's about two and a half, three feet tall. And I was like, I'm getting it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I think this may be perfect because I have really tall ceilings and I need to try to bring the height up on this bar. Well, it happened to work. And so I, at least for me, my taste, and I found a candle that I love the scent of. It has Lang Lang and tobacco, and I will include a link to it. It's from Archipelagio um, Candle Company, and it is heavenly, absolutely heavenly. There are all sorts of other scents, but I highly recommend them. Top quality, beautiful scent, last, and they fill the room even after it's after you've blown out the candle. But again, it just adds a little bit different lighting for a more intimate setting. And obviously you probably won't light it every single time. But again, if you want to light it, your matches are right there next to you if you have matchbooks. <laughs> all right. So that's number eight on how to style your bar cart. Again, I list all of these on today's show notes, www.thesimplyaluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 26. As someone who loves conversation and the beauty of not knowing exactly where any conversation may lead, with the proper food and drink to allow for your guests and yourself to relax. A bar cart is essential. It's an essential detail to consider welcoming into your home. And there's a quote, there's a quote that I found for today's podcast that I want to share. It's by Mara Lee McKee. And she says, the ornaments of your home are the people who smile upon entering time and time again. Now it depends on how much you entertain, but what I have noticed, what I have noticed in the short time that I've had my bar cart is that I have already enjoyed spending time and entertaining in my home far more than I ever expected. After all, our homes need to be destinations where we can relax. Now, I don't have people over that often, but when I do, it's become really handy to have everything already set up or a simple place to display the food or the drink that we're going to be enjoying. And even if I don't have company, I love having that stand there for my tea in the morning or in the evening with just one person having our wine there easily accessible so we don't have to run to the kitchen. It's a really nice idea to consider. And even if it takes time for you to save up and find that exact bar cart that you want, it's worth it. Like I said, it took me over a year and a half to find the bar cart that I wanted and they're everywhere now. They really are. They're everywhere. So just determine what it will work in your house, work in your lifestyle and what you prefer most importantly. Now, stay tuned for this week's Petit Plaisir. This week's Petit Plaisir is a magazine that I have fallen in love with. I didn't really expect to, and I honestly wasn't going to start subscribing to it, but I became too intrigued not to. The magazine is called Porter. And it's derived from the website Netta Porter, the high fashion uh, shopping website. And But this is a hard copy magazine. It's also available on your iPad, so it's a digital format as well. What makes this magazine unique, or I guess more of an intrigue to those of us who like to shop, is that you can shop directly from the magazine in the digital version. Just click and tap and it will take you to wherever you want to go to find that particular dress, shoe, or whatever. Now, honestly, I've never shopped from it. I always hold it in my hands and I love it. It's published six times a year and it involves all sorts of fashion, but beauty, travel, and culture. But uh, what I've been really impressed with are the articles. Online with Vogue, this magazine is, is run by Lucy Yeoman, who was the editor of Harper's Bazaar for the last 12 years before she took on this gig. And they dive into all sorts of issues, not fashion related, but women related, women inspired. For example, um, Andrew O'Hagan comes in and he writes this fantastic article in the recent spring issue. The topic being men and feminism. I absolutely loved it. His ideas were something just definitely to digest and consider. So it's not all about fashion, it's lifestyle, it's culture, it's current events. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And while the price too, this is even better news, the price is now going down as well. It's only $25 for a year subscription. And it used to be, I think, $48. So they're coming down. But it really is worth your time to read it and enjoy it. I think 
based if you are someone who likes fashion but also likes thoughtful conversation and thoughtful writing you're going to enjoy this magazine Another aspect that I really like is that they go and they peek into the homes of designers. This particular issue dives into the designer, Raffaella Ribot's house in Paris, her apartment, and it is stunning, absolutely stunning. I think you'll enjoy it. It's not over the top garish. It is just absolutely simply luxurious. And then they end with the last word, like so many magazines do, but the last words are very similar to O Magazine, where they have a woman of interest that most people know, and they share their tips and advice for life. So a lot of different aspects to it that I really enjoy, and I think you will too. So I'll provide links um, on today's show notes at www.thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 26. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Putsy Pleasure, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or from time to time, introduce you to an expert who offers insight into how to live simply, luxuriously, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.